welcome to Wednesday Worship. I'm Lucille Rouse, a local preacher in the Farmers and Gwinnett Methodist Circuit. And I'm Tom, that's uh, Lucille's husband, and I'm a worship leader at Stidians Methodist Church. Today we are continuing with our theme of looking at hymns. The recent weeks have been throughout the period of Lent, with our well-known hymns reflecting on and telling some of the events of Jesus' life towards the end of his time here on earth. From being tempted in the wilderness, uh, riding through Jerusalem, through right through to the cross on Good Friday. At this season, the hymns tend to be more sombre than rejoicing, reminding us that the scriptures tell us of the pain and suffering that Jesus endured. But as we know, the cross was not the end of the story. Lent has ended, Easter has happened, Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This week's hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, quite possibly the most popular Easter hymn, or at least one of them. It's certainly one of rejoicing and praise with its 20 alleluias, one at each end of each line of the, the five verses. I'm not really sure why, but I was thinking about how many alleluias might have been sung in total on Easter Day. Just in our circuit with its 14 chapels, it probably amounts to thousands. Maths is not my strong point. If anyone can work it out, I would love to know. But across the world, it would amount to trillions. However, I digress. Our hymn is written by Charles Wesley. Not only the founder of Method the Methodist Church, but a prolific hymn writer who I believe wrote far more than 6,500 hymns during his lifetime, and many of which are still popular today. It was written in 1739 and initially titled A Hymn for Easter Day. Apparently it was based on an older anonymous Bohemian hymn. The new hymn was first performed at the first service of the Foundry Meeting House after Wesley had adapted it into the First Methodist Chapel. Originally, the hymn had 11 verses, but over time was edited and alleluias were added. In some traditions, alleluias don't appear in hymns during Lent, but are saved up and restored again on Easter Day, which I guess is very appropriate for celebrating and praising God for restoring Jesus' life. Looking at each of the verses, they contain some of the Easter theme, themes that are so familiar to us. Verse 1. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say. Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Alleluia. Matthew's Gospel tells us of the two Marys' early morning visit to the tomb to find it empty and an angel nearby. So reading from Matthew 28, verse 5 to 11. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Just as he said would happen. Come. See where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. So that first verse allows us, men, women, children, angels, all to share in the joy and the celebration of the risen Christ. It's the very centre of our Christian faith. Verse 2 tells us, Love's redeeming work is done, fought the fight, the battle won, vain the stone, the watch, the seal, Christ has burst the gates of hell. And from Acts chapter 2 verses 23, 24 says, But God, 
following his prearranged plan, let you use the Roman government to nail him to a cross and murder him. Then God released him from the horrors of death and brought him back to life again, for death could not keep his man within his grip. This is part of Peter's powerful preaching, wanting the people to know that everything that Jesus had said about himself was true. The coming together of God's plan to redeem, to bring his people back to him. And verse 3, lives again our glorious king, where, O death, is now thy sting. Once he died our souls to save, where's thy victory, boasting grave? I think this verse really packs a punch. And I rather like what the message translation of Corinthians 21, 54 to 57 says. In the resurrection scheme of things, this has to happen. Everything perishable taken off the shelves and replaced by imperishable. This mortal replaced by immortal. Then the saying will come true. Death swallowed by triumphant life. Who got the last word, O oh death? O oh death, who's afraid of you now? It was sin that made death so frightening, and low-code guilt that gave sin its leverage, its destructive power. But now, in a single victorious stroke of life, all three, sin, guilt, death, are gone. The gift of our Master, Jesus Christ. Thank God. Thank God indeed. Death has been defeated. It is no longer the end. Verse 4. Saw we now where Christ has led, following our exalted head. Made like him, like him we rise. Ours the cross, the grave, the skies. I really think this verse speaks for itself. As those gates of hell are burst, we soar. We now have a new life in Christ, made like him as brothers and sisters. We share in his resurrection. And finally, verse 5. King of glory, soul of bliss. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everlasting life is this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thee to know, thy power to prove. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thus to sing and thus to love. Hallelujah. As each of these verses have a focus on the resurrection, in the final verse, Mr. Wesley seems to describe four things, four requirements to help us to enjoy eternal life with God, to know God, to bear witness to him, to sing our faith and to love one another. Thus to sing and thus to love however many alleluias may have been sung on Easter Day, they can never be enough to express our thanks, our praise, our joy, as we are reminded of what our amazing, triumphant God has done. How can we not end with a alleluia? We're now going to conclude with a prayer. Loving God, we rejoice in the hope that is at the heart of Easter, the rising, the new beginning, the light of resurrection flooding over the shadow of the cross. We pray for the church, that we may live and speak as people of the resurrection, showing by our words and deeds the sense of joy and purpose that Easter brings. Risen Lord, Yours is the power that reaches every human heart, the power that sweeps through the church, the power that stretches to the end of the earth. Come in power, Lord, touch hearts and lives and every church and make the kingdoms of, kingdoms of this world the kingdom of our God. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday worship. Christ.
Christmas.